Let's roll over into the NBA, everybody. And and, uh, and to be honest, we're not going to sit here and talk power rankings. We're going to talk about trades. Two Bullshit. things. We're going to we're going to talk about the Bulls trade, and we're going to talk about the Carmelo Anthony grumblings. So right. I'll let you pick whichever one you want to talk about first, because if we go hop in the time machine and go okay. back a couple weeks, I think both these topics work out in my favor. Yeah, I you know it does because George was George was very. Admin of saying, you know what, with Derrick Rose being sidelined, um, the Bulls, and a lot of this he said on the show, and a lot of it he said when him and I were just bullshit talking, you know, in each other's presence, he's like, they're going to fucking implode that team and fucking rebuild. George had said that over and over and over again, and he just kept saying, I'm like, why is this motherfucker keep telling me this shit? Because <laughs> that's George. Like, if he's, if he's really got something that's on his mind, he's going to keep telling you, so when it does happen, he will get 150% credit for it. You are getting 150% credit for it, George, because it happened. Ding! You are officially Negro Damas because you are project <laughs> but but uh it, it, it and the thing is the funny thing about this trade, which I found amazing, being a Lakers fan, the Lakers were trying to trade up for this, you know, to reduce stuff so they wouldn't hit get hit with the luxury tax and have have to pay Gasol. You know, they wanted to get rid of Powell. And they were trying to work this deal with the Cavaliers. And the only snag in that deal was, okay, we'll give you Bynum, we'll give you Gasol. But you know what? The Lakers are like, you're gonna have to give us another young player or either give us a tra a, a draft pick or tra or whatever. And so the Cavaliers were like, nah, fuck that. You know? And so I was like, damn, I wonder why they're not doing this. Then they turn around and the they Cavaliers just bet the farm on Lou Aldang. And they dumped everything. They gave they got Lou Aldang, gave you know, did the same thing, got rid of buying him, and gave up like three draft picks. So I'm thinking, okay, what the fuck were the Lakers asking? Were the Lakers asking some crazy shit or were you guys just like okay Gasol's a little bit older um these guys are you know we, these you know dang is younger and his contract is not as heavy I don't fucking know but it shit didn't make a lot of sense to me and I'm sure there's cool. somebody out there go ahead and, and the thing you got to look at now is Derek Rose has got to be sitting on the sideline going oh shit because they're talking about amnesting Carlos Boozer and you think Joe Kim Noah's going to stick around and want to rebuild after he's been on the cusp oh. of you know playoff contention and things like that and that's exactly what i said oh, and yeah. the bulls in my opinion are doing this very smartly they yeah. have players who still have value and value on the market and look no further than this trade they just right. gave up a, a in my opinion an underperforming power slash small forward who really hasn't lived up to the college hype that he right. came into the league with and they just got three picks for that cat and yeah. they and they're gonna cut i mean they're gonna absolutely cut bynum and let I me mean, tell you this if if those picks carry the luck that the cavaliers carry the luck the cavaliers luck with them so far as the lottery in their picks it could be crazy because the yeah, fucking cavaliers I think, I th Huh? I think if you look at the terminology of that trade, a lot of these p picks are protected. So if it falls between one and fifteen, they don't get it. It'll drop back, and it's when you get to the legalese of those draft picks, it gets really dicey as to when the, may, the um, Bulls would get those and and who. But my thing is, are they going to give up Joe Kim Noah? And what can you get for him? Right to a team like uh, to a team that thinks they're one player away, and Joe Kim, and they need a, a low post presence because that guy kid's got a hell of a motor, and it, he'll go in there and you know, rip down the boards all night long for you. Yeah, that's you, you got a good point. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I It just doesn't make sense to me. I'm sure, you know, but the one thing that does make sense is, is you called that shit, you know? Yeah. Now, and uh, go ahead. the next thing that I called, we were talking about where should Carmelo go and play? Mm -hmm. Where would Carmelo be a good fit? Mm -hmm. And where's the one trade that popped up almost immediately? Blake Griffin for Carmelo Anthony. Yep. And why did Carmelo Anthony go that's crazy? Because he knows if he goes to the Clippers, he's got to play second fiddle. He knows the ball doesn't run through him. And mm -hmm. I said weeks ago, if he wants to win a championship, that's exactly what he needs to do. Right. He, he and you know, and that's the thing, man. I it's it's funny because I was watching uh on on uh, ESPN on Sports Nation, they were talking about like 
franchises that are just fucked. And one of them was the Clippers. They're like, they're never going to win because it starts from the top down. And they just, you look at that roster. And I think two years ago, everybody and yourself included was like, it's the new LA's team. And, and you know, it's great. They're playing and performing, outperforming the Lakers, but they're still not LA's team because they're not winning shit. You know, they're, nope. they're, they're struggling to get in playoffs. They're struggling this year. They're not one of the top four or five teams in the, in the West. And it's like, and look at that fucking roster is fucking loaded. You know, and if you take Melo, I don't think that's going to change anything. It's just, it's just a hot fucking mess in Clipperland. You know, I, I, I think, I think if you take Melo, though, it gives you a legitimate scoring threat mm -hmm. that's can, can score off the dribble, can score from the perimeter and, and gives you, I mean, let's face it. Blake Griffin has been working tremendously hard. And, and on let's his face it. You're going to need a legitimate scoring threat because he's going to be taking all the shots. <laughs> Well, yeah, but the thing is, if if Chris Paul's back in the lineup, you know the offense has to run through Chris Paul. That's yeah. going to cut Carmelo's touches way down because yeah. he's no longer going to bring the ball up the court, and that's what he's doing in New York. They in ball the they inbound the ball to Carmelo, and the four the other four guys might as well just stay down on the defensive end. Well, I'm going to tell you I'm what, not gonna, he, I wouldn't go rebound for that cat. Well, I'm going to tell you what, if Carmelo plays for the Clippers, there's two things you can sure that he will have fucking. Fucking laryngitis from screaming, pass me the ball, motherfucker. Okay, and there'll mm -hmm. be a lot of people that they play that get clotheslined because he will be clotheslining hey. motherfuckers trying to get open and then screaming at CP3, pass me the ball, bitch. <laughs> yeah, and and let me tell you, if for everyone who thinks he wouldn't go to LA, his wife is Lala Vasquez, and she was a VJ on MTV, and trust me, wants nothing more, in my opinion, probably be thrusted back into the limelight, and that would mm -hmm. be a lot easier to do in L.A. than it is in New York. Hey, you know, the fucking crazy thing is is that he might end up being a Laker if they think, I mean, because of that. And I you will know? feel for you, and, yeah. and I'm going to tell you right now, with, with your basketball acumen, you know that would not be a good move for the Lakers. No, 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 no. I, there's one player that... that I think they should go after, and you know who it is. And I you think stop that's what that shit right now. I'm just saying. I'm yeah, just saying. say that. You know what you can say. If I had the remote and it was last week, well, you'd be no. The show would be over. So for all you people out there, it's done. We're a wrap. We're not going down that road. That's a one way street, and it ain't going to L. A. <laughs> LeBron. I would. I would be happier to watch him go back to Cleveland than go be a Laker. Yeah, I, I would think so, being a Laker fan. But I, I, I could, I could, I keep saying it, and I, I want all you fans out there to to jump on boycott to get. I mean, basically push to say, hey, let's get LeBron in L.A. because that would be move. fucking fun. It Bad would be move. fun. It's lot, a terrible of, move. Anyway, guys, we're gonna wrap Horry. it up because we have been just yapping too long. We'll Rotten. catch you guys. <laughs> uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Poo poo, even. You said what now? <laughs> Poo -poo. I said poo poo even. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what, if he puts on that bur if he puts on that yellow and uh, purple burgundy and, uh, gold, gold pimp. Per I was trying to say burgundy gold because of Redskins. But if he puts on that uh, that uh, purple and gold, you you'll you'll be wearing, and I'll be the first one to buy you the jersey. <laughs> Deuces. See ya.